Hi everyone, Shirtlight here. As you might know, I usually do cover Gundam games in regards to how to do this and that in this and that game. Similarly to a Game Facts guide or one of those vintage guidebooks that were sold alongside older console games. However, I haven't made a so-called step one, which bridges the gap between seeing a game, playing it and wanting to know more. As such, every once in a while I'm intending to make a how to get into style video featuring a handful of Gundam games connected either as a series, subgenre, or just a curated list of multiple entries arbitrarily linked together, and giving you a brief introduction to them. As a quick disclaimer, I do fully endorse piracy and emulation for such ends. Copyright genies can get banned. Anyways, among the various Gundam games, there happens to be over a dozen Gundam side-scrollers, such as the Sega Saturn game Kido Senshi Gundamu and the Victory Gundam Beat'em Up for a Super Famicom not to mention the crossover entries such as The Great Battle 2 and a few others. But today I'm gonna be talking specifically about running guns. So that one PS2 seed game and a few others will have to wait for now. This time around I'm going to specifically focus on the games SD Gundam v Saxon Shido and its sequel SD Gundam 2 for the SNES, SD Gundam Psycho Salamander no Kyoi, as well as SD Gundam Sangokushi Rainbow Tairiku Senki for multi-game arcade systems, and lastly SD Gundam Operation UC for the Wonderswan Color. There is likely more installments in this subgenre, but as stated, this one is more of a curated list to start off of. Let's begin then. Starting off with Psycho Salamander no Kyoi, or the Fright of Psycho Salamander, it's a run-of-the-mill arcade run and gun. You got your trusty RX-78, albeit in SD. And honestly, this is probably the closest to what one would consider a Gundam run and gun, with space and water stages adding more vertical options. Which you're honestly gonna need. You're up against the horde of Zeeks and Titans, and you're tasked with ripping each and every one of them into pieces. And once that's done, there's also stage bosses to keep you entertained. As far as power-ups and progression is concerned, some enemies will straight up drop weapon pickups, allowing you to go from humble Vulcans and a pair of beam sabers to weapons like the Hyper Bazooka, the Gundam Hammer and the Sazabi's Beam Shot Rifle, which by the way can rapid fire. On top of shields and some more power-ups, you can easily snowball over time. Which does come in handy since the difficulty does increase each stage. You should be able to run it on the MAME emulator, just like the next entry on this list. Thus far, I've only messed with the MAME only a little bit, and so far both the setup and the controls for the two arcade installments are super straightforward. All you really have to customize are the basic player directions and the player buttons 1 and 2 on top of adding a keybind for the duo of the player start and the coin insertion buttons. In both Psycho Salamander and Tairiku Senki, button 1 is for firing and the button 2 is for jumping. Another such installment for the multi-game arcade system is the SD Gundam Sangakushi Rainbow Tairiku Senki. This one is admittedly tangentially related to the SD Gundam Sangokuden line, but the usual god-awful gaudy stylization is mostly relegated to some weapons, a handful of bosses and a few unit portraits and it isn't as egregious as one would expect. The enemy lineup is much more on the wacky side, featuring units of many UC factions. Hell, one of the bosses is a color-swapped Gundam GP01. Not to mention that you can run into a big row in a jungle, or even a Psycho Gundam Mark II and a Gapland underwater. Unlike in Psycho Salamander, your Gundam doesn't fly slash swim on certain stages, relying on moving platforms such as this core booster instead. In fact, some stages do feature more decent platforming as well. Not to mention, you're starting with a beam rifle by default. Although you don't really get a health bar, only the standard indicator with lives. The power-ups are handled in a similar way to Contra, though some of the power-up pickups do fly around and alternate between multiple types, so I suppose you can plan around that. Once again, this is an arcade entry, so you already know the spiel. MAME should be your best bet for running this one. I should also mention that both SD Rainbow Tairiku Senki and SD Psycho Salamander can be played with a buddy in a two-player mode. Now for the duo of SD Gundam v Saxon Shido and SD Gundam 2 for the SNES. These two share the arcade nature of the previous entries and cover the plotlines of the 1979 show and its 1985 sequel respectively, with SD Gundam 2 letting you select from Zeta, Mark II and the Hyakushiki. The two are somewhat similar in their formulas and have adjustable difficulties with the easy mode omitting a few stages and the true ending. One of the main things that separate these two from the conventional arcade running guns is a special bar placed next to the health indicator, 
which fills in as you fight, letting you select various useful power-ups and activate them. There's also Harrow pickups. Difficulty-wise, these two seem to be a little tougher than the two arcade entries. The controls are simple. You have a d-pad to move and crouch, one button for jumping slash turning and flight, one for shooting, and one to select a power-up after picking one up from the power-up bar, using the left and right bumpers. The action buttons can be adjusted in the settings, by the way. This game also has a versus mode, whose balancing is rather questionable, yet still fun. As a heads up, you will get a decent amount of mileage off of ducking and crawling, especially in the second game. It should be able to run on most SNES emulators and also supports a two-player feature. Lastly, for the Wonderswan color game, SD Gundam Operation UC. This one uses a flat plane that the player can go up and down on for all stage types, which is a feature more typical for beat-em-ups. Nonetheless, this is a run-and-gun game first and foremost. Controls are simple. You have one directional pad, two buttons, one to attack and one for special attack, and that's about it. The attack button essentially has three functions. If you press it normally, a normal attack will come out. You can hold the button for a charge attack, and if you're close to an enemy, you'll go for melee. As for the special attacks, they do vary from unit to unit, just like the normal attacks. Though unlike the normal attacks, they do require at least one bar of the special gauge, and often come with iframes, even if some of them are brief. The crux of the gameplay loop is, as the game's genre implies, running around and shooting sometimes even slashing the game's various enemies. Since both the units you're playing as and the units you'll be fighting do differ somewhat drastically from one another, I'd argue that most of the enjoyment you'll get from this one will be working around the enemy moves. The moment you find out how to time your shot so that Char's Gelgoog will get hit during its beam Naginata charge, that's when it basically clicks with you. The game's AI is somewhat cheesable at times, though I'd say that it isn't to the game's detriment. Aside from your HP, there's a gauge for shield HP. Basically, if your unit has a shield and isn't holding the attack button, then the shield can take a couple hits for you, assuming the attack was some kind of projectile coming from the front. The one under that is your special gauge, which charges up as you land hits on enemies and take hits yourself. It can store up to three full stacks, and when you execute a special attack, you'll spend every full stack available. Some units like the Double Zeta and the New Gundam even have unique specials when executing the move at full stacks, with the High Mega Cannon and the Funnel Barrier replacing the Missile Barrage and Fin Funnels respectively. Speaking of funnels, they can be shut down, which is nice, especially when fighting things like the Game Hulk or the Zeong. By clearing the game's routes, you can unlock units to use in the Versus mode. Each time you clear a route, you'll keep getting two more mobile suits you don't own already until you've unlocked all the playable units for that route's anime counterpart. If you want to get them fast, just grind the last route of each campaign, i.e. the Ball mode, the DJ mode, the Mephus mode and the Sazabi mode. A piece of advice for the Ball mode. If you do a cannon charge shot and shoot the Gelgoogs in the back or in their feet, they will die faster for some reason. One of the few gripes I have with it is that some bosses can be a pain. Specifically the Dublin Psycho Gundam Mark II fight. But those are few and far apart, so that shouldn't be much of an issue. So yeah, that's almost half a dozen Gundam games that would fall under the run and gun genre. From the two older arcade installments to the trio that came out on home consoles and handheld respectively. For licensed anime games, these are pretty decent. With both casual and more hardcore players having something fun enough to play with. Anyways, thank you for tuning in and feel free to let me know what you think of this new format. In the meantime, I'll go script some more stuff. For the time being, take care and this is Shirtlad, signing out.